please give this video. Please give this. Please. Please give this video a thumbs up. We have Taylor Fraze here because he thought it'd be a really good idea to do a couple's Q&A. So that's what we're gonna do. He posted a picture today on Instagram asking his followers to ask us any questions. I didn't post one because it was super last minute. So we're just gonna jump right into it because I haven't seen these questions. I haven't done anything. First, you guys know what's up. Advent calendar time. Yes. Numero yes. What do you think of the joke or a quote? I think it's a joke because it's gotten like 8 million quotes. Seriously, man. No, it's a, it's a quote. Why am I so upset? I love quotes. And you put these in there. I know. <laughs> I jumbled them up. The things you are passionate about are not random. They are your calling. Fabian Fredrickson. Good one. That's really good because people, you know, sometimes they uh, feel like they shouldn't be doing what they're doing because it's not like practical or it's not like being a doctor or being a lawyer or whatever. Just know that whatever it is that you have in your heart, do it full force and you will reap those benefits. Okay, wow. now. Without further ado, let's just jump right into the couple's Q&A. <laughs> First one. <laughs> it's my friend Tom Horan. How does it feel to be a total Teddy Brewski doppelganger? I respect it. <laughs> I think it feels awesome. I think if there's one person to look like, it's Teddy Brewski. If you guys don't know who he is, I'm gonna answer the picture right here because when I was in Equinox, one of my clients was like, do you know who Teddy Brewski is? That looks like Taylor. Just briefly, I, I mean, yeah. when you really look at him, I don't think so much, but maybe just because of the dark hair and the darker complexion. Either way, I dig it. David Iglesias, when you guys come into Houston, your friend Spider-Man. <laughs> actually, David, we're it actually is... there right now when this video is posted. <laughs> so, we'll probably see you. Because it's Monday, we will be there Thursday. Uh, this Thursday, the... the... What is the 12th? Thursday the 12th, yes. No, so... the 8th. Yes, but we're coming back to 12. Yes. <laughs> we will be there this Thursday, the 8th through the 12th. Uh, how did you guys meet? By the way, you two are the cutest couple ever. Oh, well, thank thanks. you. She's the cuter one, but it's all good. How did we meet? How did we meet? <laughs> <laughs> we met in New York uh, working for Equinox in at Bryant Park. That's it. We both Rest got a job together. That's it. Same Not time. together, but we both came from different parts yeah. at Equinox and we started at the same time. There seemed to have been a few- Wait, who is it from? Oh, Jamaican girl gets fit. Hey girl. Asks. <laughs> there seemed to have been a few fit couple breakups recently. What do you think of couples who post videos explaining the breakup? In some cases I can understand it because the video content will change, but in other cases I think we get more information than we need. What do you think? Please never break up. I love you guys. Aww. Well, we'll do our best. Well, yeah. <laughs> Try and not mess it up. It's not in the plan. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's unnecessary. Most of the time, like you said, sometimes the content can change, but I mean, if the content does change with that other person not there, I think the audience can figure it out for themselves. If they see a demeanor change, if they see just the environment change of their videos and of their content, then you can kind of figure it out. But I don't think diving into it full force with like explanations because you know, if, you, if we weren't on YouTube, we wouldn't owe anybody an explanation. And even if we did break up, I don't think I would owe the public an explanation on our personal life. Right. You know, I, I just don't think that's necessary. Yes, you guys might, in, might want to know, but it's not your obligation to know. So I, I think it's unnecessary. I don't think it's unnecessary. I think you should probably point out the elephant in the room. But like he said, I don't think that you should dive into it and give anybody explanations. Because let's be honest, sometimes we don't even give our friends explanations about why you broke up with your significant other or whatever it is. It's personal lives for a reason. And now if they want to do it, then by all means. But I don't think it's necessary to go in and explain like he said, she said, this had happened. This that's when things get misconstrued. Yeah, like, especially. The internet. Yeah, so um, avoid all problems and just kind of say, you know, we went our separate ways, this and that, and move on. All right. Oh, do you see marriage or kids in the future? Let me see. Not right now. <laughs> I mean, with kids anyway. Right. Yes and yes, but not right now. Yes and yes, but not right now. Definitely. You just need to get to a place where, I mean, I think ready is a loose term because when are you ever ready? A little more stable, I think. Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, I do want to have a wedding. <laughs> I don't want to just run off and get married, just say we're married. But yeah. But yeah. 
definitely. All right, have you ever had to deal with jealousy? If so, how did you get past it? If not, what do you think prevents jealousy from taking root? I am not a jealous person. Wait, who's that from? Oh, that's from... And Fortune that is from favors the bit. Jealousy. I'm, I'm a pretty laid back person. I don't really get jealous too often, if ever. It's kind of annoying. <laughs> I'm like, bro, this guy wants me. <laughs> cool. I, I think trust is a huge thing when it comes to jealousy because if you let jealousy take over, I, I think that's a sign that you're not secure with that other person. So say like Yami's getting hit on and I get jealous of that guy. Like why would I be jealous of that guy? He's hitting on my girlfriend. That's cool, he's interested in her, but if I am confident enough in our relationship, I know that's not gonna make any difference whatsoever. If I'm confident enough, if I'm doing my job as a boyfriend, as a husband, as- Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> if, if, if I'm providing her with what she needs, there's no reason for her to cross that line back and so that's that's my viewpoint and same goes for the woman too like if you know yeah but yes i do get jealous all the time <laughs> but you're secure i am i you're am secure. i don't think that it's not like a jealousy like he's gonna leave me type jealous i'm like this place talk to my man <laughs> that kind of jealousy it's not like he's gonna leave me yeah yeah i don't get upset when guys talk to her because i think it's i think it's funny to watch them try when, uh, Lauren versus the world, when is the 15,000 calories? Not soon calories? enough, girl! It's coming. I'm dying. <laughs> so I've been eating like an asshole for like 15 days now. And so I, I could probably do it right now. But it, it will come probably in the new year. I'll say that. Yes, after bodybuilding.com, after all that good stuff. Yeah, we want to do it right. Yeah. <laughs> Mar Marnie Louise Hassan. She's my client. Marnie Louise Hassan asks, how do you keep each other going on prep? It must be hard when you both are on it together. What gets you through? I don't think it was that hard getting it, it going through it together. I know some people are like, oh, your hormones are out of whack and you guys get emotional and you're hangry all the time. And that's not, that wasn't the case at all. I mean, I was, yeah, I was hungry and stuff. I mean, I'm still hungry, but um, <laughs> I'm always hungry. I'm always hungry on prep or off prep. But Again, I don't know if we're the best to answer that question because I didn't feel like the tension no. ever between us on prep. I think it was pretty good and... I think we were pretty clear level-headed. Yeah. We, we, we knew what we had to do and we knew what it was going to take to get there. And so having that understanding really helped us, you know, get through what we needed to do. I think now is when I'm like, bro, come on, I'm on a diet still. You can't eat that shit. So like now I'm like starting to resent him when he eats food instead of, you know, on prep. Yeah, I think when it's together, it's easier as a couple because you don't have to like watch other people, either other person eat all these delicious foods that you can't eat. D Keen, tell us about a fight you guys got in and how you worked through it. People always talk about the good stuff, but I want to know how people get through the hard stuff. Thanks. Love you guys. We love you too. Thank you for the question. Sorry, I was thinking about a fight. <laughs> you have, love a fight? You. <laughs> I have a couple. So most of the time. It's me being an idiot. I'm gonna put that out there right That's now. why I'm smiling. <laughs> I think most guys can attest to that. You're just an idiot sometimes. You do something that does not go over well, okay? But I think the key to fixing any argument and fixing anything is communication and just getting out what you need to talk about. Because the longer you stew in something, the longer you keep something in, and longer you're upset about it, because the other person is not going to be able to read your mind. They're not going to be able to know what you're thinking and what you're going through. And if you don't know, then you can't do anything to help. And if they don't talk to you about it, they're going to be holding it in. And it's going to be making them more upset. And every time they see you, they're going to want to rip your head off. And so the sooner you guys can talk about it, I know there's going to be a little period of like stewing in it and like thinking about, you know, what went wrong or how you could have prevented it. But I think communication is one of the biggest things in resolving a fight. I think so. He hit it right in the nail. Right? He hit, mm -mm -mm. He hit the nail right on the head. I don't think we should talk about like specifics, specifics no. because again, that's our, personal. that's our personal stuff. But there have been times that he's an idiot. <laughs> but, or, or when I just get upset for whatever I'd upset and I'll hold things in and then he obviously reads my, my emotions like, like that so he'll just make get it out of me and um yeah what he said communication is key communication is key okay. talk it out what is your favorite personality trait about each other and the least favorite personality trait you go first 
No, I gotta think. My favorite is that she makes me laugh, straight up. She makes me laugh all the time. <laughs> And two, we're over two years in now, and typically that phase goes by. Usually at the beginning you laugh about the stupid stuff, and when that stupid stuff happens two years in, you're like, what the fuck? You <laughs> put that shit out. But literally, she'll do, she'll do something, and I'll just start laughing, and she'll ask me why I'm laughing at her. I'll just be like, you just make me laugh. It's kind of cute. That's it. I love it. What's the least one? Least favorite? I would have to say her anxiety. Her anxiety makes me anxious, and I'm not an anxious person, but it makes me anxious, so I don't like it. That's good. That's it. <laughs> I was like, what is he going to say? What oh, is no. he going to say? Favorite trait about Taylor is how caring he is. Not only to me, but to other people as well. Obviously, I, I love that he's caring towards me. But I think it's more important to see how he treats, or people treat other people in general. People that can't do really anything for him. I feel like Taylor is very caring, goes above and beyond for a lot of people. And that's something that's very rare these days. Now, nah. mm. my least oh, shit. favorite part about it. <laughs> You know, when he eats something, <laughs> he'll leave it next to the dishwasher instead of putting it in the dishwasher. Like an empty plate? Like an empty plate. Or if he'll like have cereal, he'll leave the cereal box out. <laughs> That's just my biggest peeve. Not only with him, it's just that something he does, but like it's just like if the garbage can is right there, just scooch it over to the garbage can. <laughs> <laughs> but that's it. Very, you very little things. Last right. question? Last one. Um, oh no, two more. Okay. Uh, how do you compromise? Oh, Sarah shapes up. How do you compromise to work out together with different goals slash weak points? Would you rather forever be sticky or itchy? <laughs> <gasps> oh my god. Um, um, sticky. I would use sticky. I can't. I'm itchy right now. I, know, I, can't, I can't, do can't. And I'm trying to not oh, stress. You saw me itch it before. I can't. Sticky. I, if I was itchy forever, no way. Sticky, sticky is cool. You can like stick onto the walls. No, I think sticky, sticky like hands. I'm thinking like. Oh, like clammy. If you have like enlightened on your hands, like get some, oh, get something on your hands. Yeah, sticky. 100. percent What's the other question? <laughs> How do you compromise to work out together with different goals and weak points? Just gotta do it. Yeah. Um, we were training for two different things. Obviously, I was training for bikini. He was training for men's physique, which I mean is bikini too. But <laughs> I mean, <laughs> my split was very different than his. As much as I love working out with him, you know, it took me a second to be like, okay, Yami, you can't always work out with your boyfriend. You know, you gotta be independent. And so um, you just gotta deal with it. And then, you know, there will be some times that you can work out together. Like last week, we worked out together, which was really fun. Um, which I guess it makes me appreciate it more when we mm -hmm. get to work out together since we don't. I think it's just understanding, you know, working out together, whether we're on a different split, just understanding what the other person needs to do. It's not like, like you said, we can't work out together all the time, but when we do, it's fun. It's that much We push each other. All right, last thing. Blake Fraser. asked. Oh, wait, hold on. No way, it's Jen asked, how did you guys meet? But we already answered that, just mm. didn't want to like not. Right. I acknowledge you. <laughs> Blake Fraze asks, what do you want for Christmas? Is that from you, Blake, or is that from Taz? Is that from Blake or me? Is she asking, like, what do I want for Christmas from her or, like, in general? What, what, Blake, what are you going to buy us for Christmas? <laughs> I would like a pony. A po That's okay. what you would want. <laughs> I want, it's going to go corny. Peace and happiness. World peace. And world hunger. I mean, I no, I'm really kidding. Like that. <laughs> I think it's gonna come, sound corny, but I would like uh, to be happy and successful in the new year. That's always my. That's it. You know, it's one of those wish. things where we're constantly striving for. Whereas, I mean, tangible things are always nice. But I for think, a second, I feel like though. I mean, for Christmas, I'd love to go on a trip somewhere. If we're talking about like a gift. Yeah. But. What do I want for Christmas? Funny story. The other day, I was like, hey, Yami, what do you want for Christmas? And I was like, why are you asking this just silly question? We have like two months for Christmas. And he's like, actually, we have three weeks. And I was like, what? <laughs> mm, this. this day, this year has flown by. But what I want for Christmas is kind of like what Taz said. I just want to be happy and just outdo myself from last year. And for I sure. think we were talking about like gifts and stuff about what we're going to get each other. And I think that instead of material things we would both want something that's going to help us with whatever we want to do whether it be like equipment for youtube or i don't know stuff just to make you know lift better or something that's going to progress up and progress us instead of just like he said a material Give us something satisfaction thing. For yeah exactly items. so yeah that's it all right so that's gonna do our q a guys hope you guys enjoyed it 
please make sure to follow Taz on Instagram and on YouTube so you see more informational and comedic stuff. And he's a chef now too, apparently. So if you want to see some recipes, check out his channel. Mm -hmm. Thank Emerald who? <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. Please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you haven't already. And we'll see you in the next one. Jingle bell, jingle bell, jingle bell rock.